Aloha, I'm Dr. Glenn Sword out. I'm going to read our blog post uh, because we do work with a lot of many people who have blinding eye diseases at various stages and are able to help some of them even recover vision uh, as well as uh, slow down or prevent the, the damage. So, uh, so everyone and, and many people like to uh, like to watch and listen rather than process through the eyes uh, through written material. So we'll present our, our blog posts in, uh, in both formats for you. From early experiences in vision therapy to the threat of blindness, I have been led to a visionary new approach to healing. I was a C student in second grade. I had nothing to compare my experience to, to know what else might be possible. Thank God I chose the right parents. My father was a pioneer in vision therapy or visual training as it was called back then. He even wrote a book packed with his methods that I would later bring to Tokyo to establish my first office as a doctor of optometry. So my first experience with vision work was a summer of vision exercises learning and practicing how to get meaning from the lighted world and how to guide and coordinate action based on the visual space world. Peripheral awareness of the fullness of visual space, eye movement and coordination of the two eyes as a team, depth perception, eye hand and eye foot coordination, balance, visual memory, visualization, the following school year was a rebirth, like entering a whole new world. I was an A student. I was helping other students understand what the teacher was trying to get across. I'm sure that I would never have achieved all of the academic awards and honors throughout my schooling without that boost from developing my vision. I certainly wouldn't have been an Ivy League grad with high honors or a doctor. When I was in high school, I began working in the vision therapy process. I got to see what a difference it made in the quality of life of the patients and feel how rewarding that was for me to contribute to bettering the lives of others. That played a role in deciding to follow in my father's footsteps as a doctor of optometry. Fundamentally, I was drawn to medicine, not conventional medicine of that era, the 1970s though. You see, I had been raised in an unusual family. Before I was born, my father's mother nearly died when she was walking down the sidewalk one day and a pesticide truck came by and sprayed her with DDT. Her life was saved by an unusual physician who had spent 20 years doing hospital-based research in vitamin metabolism and also researching energy medicine at General Electric with one of the world's leading physicists, Charles Proteus Steinmetz. That doctor's name was Dr. Martin, and in his honor, I had been given the middle name Martin. Dr. Martin was so far ahead of his time that in 1960, he would fire patients if they didn't quit smoking cigarettes. If integrative medicine had been a recognized specialty in medicine in 1978 when I graduated from Dartmouth, that is where I would have gone. I considered naturopathic medicine, which I have since studied, but it was not licensable in my home state of New York, so I passed on that for the time. I already knew that as a doctor of optometry, I could have a positive impact on people's lives through vision therapy. And I also knew that my dad had at least one colleague who used nutrition to treat his patients, so that that showed me that I could at least explore the use of natural medicine within the eye care field. That colleague who helped to inspire me happens to be a fellow Ivy Leaguer, a Princeton grad, Benjamin C. Lane, MPH, OD, FAAO. As an integral and synthetic thinker, the pathological side of medicine held the least appeal for me as I went through my training. Little did I know that I would wind up applying my way of thinking of solutions from outside the box to reformulate the entire world of understanding and healing disease. I didn't even think I would like studying anatomy and dissecting cadavers in the anatomy lab, but the reality of actually seeing the incredible structure of the body in 3D totally fascinated me, even despite the overwhelming smell of formaldehyde. Our anatomy professors, who also taught at the medical school, said I was the best student they ever had anywhere. Along with being the top student at the top school in the field, I was also elected president of the international organization representing over 3,000 student doctors, the American Optometric Student Association. In the midst of all that success, I learned that I had glaucoma. 
At age 25, I found out that if I followed the conventional modes of treatment with drugs and surgery, I would still probably go blind by the age of 50. The ophthalmology professor who diagnosed me knew enough of my background to suggest that I take on the task of discovering the underlying causes and healing myself rather than volunteering as another victim to the medical system. That diagnosis, together with my orientation to natural medicine, my Ivy League training in multiple sciences, and the imminent doctor, doctorate in vision science, started a perfect storm that has led me to my role today in not only healing glaucoma, but also other blinding eye diseases like cataract and macular degeneration. And the remarkable experiences I have personally lived and witnessed around me over the past 38 years have also led me to do much research and contemplation in order to more fully comprehend the marvelous truths of science and spirit. I conclude that we are all cells in God's body. Our vision is a window on creation, which is perhaps an epiphenomenon of God's mind, but a true reality nonetheless. We can see not only directly with our eyes and extended with the tools of sight into both the macrocosm and microcosm, but we see even further with the eyes of the mind, all the way out to the Hubble sphere and into the Planck unit of time, space, and energy. The alpha rhythm of the brain, the resting rhythm of the muscles of the eyes and the body, and the refresh rate of our visual perception of gestalts of our visual spatial world are precisely located at the center of that full spectrum of our capacity to envision. We are an integral part of an autonomous, cellular, fractal, holographic, living, and sentient universe. Realization of these remarkable facts has become the essential context of my clinical theory of everything. They are worthy of contemplation. Knowing who you are is essential to living life to its fullest because who you are is ultimately who you are becoming. Knowing why you are here is essential to being a fully sentient being, as we are babies having a gestational growth experience as spirits inhabiting these biological body suits for a time here on earth, the womb of heaven. Healing is personal growth. The growth and development of the spirit in its form and substance and its content, the soul, Knowing where you are is essential to creating positive change. And how will you get where you want to go without a decent map? Clinical theory is the roadmap to recovery of radiant health and well-being. Welcome to the journey.